All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Good afternoon, everybody. And if you joined us last week, welcome back. And if you're joining us for the first time, I'd like to welcome you all to the second webinar in UC Irvine Extension's sixth annual GATE webinar series. Today's topic is the, three, the new three R's for GATE, augmented reality, QR codes, and virtual reality. This session is being recorded and the recording will be available within 24 hours. If you registered through Extension's free events website, you will automatically receive an email with a link to this recording tomorrow. If for some reason you do not receive the email, you can access the archive manually by going to uci.webex.com, clicking on the Event Center tab, and then clicking on View Event Recordings. The presentation will be listed with other recordings, so you do want to make sure that you look for this webinar's title. And again, like I mentioned before, I'll, I'll be sending out the recording link uh, tomorrow morning. So if you don't receive it by then, feel free to send me an email, or you can also find it manually by going to the uci.webex.com site. My name is Lisa Kotowalki, and I am a program manager here at UC Irvine Extension. Here's a brief overview of what we're going to cover in this webinar session. First, I'll start off with a quick overview of WebEx features, so you'll know how to submit questions to our featured speaker throughout his presentation. Next, I'll provide you with some information about several GATE resources offered through UCI Extension, including our fully online Gifted and Talented ed Education Specialized Studies program. I will cover the requirements, fees, and some upcoming courses for our spring quarter, which begins March 31st. I'll then be handing it over to Hall Davidson as he will be presenting on today's topic, the three R's for GATE. At the end of his presentation, we will have a brief Q&A session. Finally, I'll leave you with my contact information so that you can send us any additional questions that we didn't address. If you encounter any technical difficulties during the webinar today, again, please send a chat message over to UCI Eric and he can help you troubleshoot any issues. If you have a question for Hall regarding the content of this presentation, please submit it in the chat panel and we will address it at the end if we have time. So if you're looking in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, you should see a row of icons. Go ahead and click on the chat bubble icon and the chat panel should appear on your screen. And if you do have a question throughout the presentation, please feel free to submit it. You will want to make sure that you send it to the host, presenter, and panelists, and that will make sure that both Hall and myself receive your question. And again, if we have some a few minutes at the end of the webinar, that's when we'll be addressing your questions. If not, you can always email them to us as well. Oh, and I just got a note from Hall. If you're on a Mac, the chat panel might be in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. So thanks, Hall, for pointing that out. Okay, here's a brief overview of the GATE Specialized Studies program we have here at UC Irvine Extension. Our certificate program is fully online and consists of nine quarter units. Students have the opportunity to pick from a variety of electives with different unit values to make up those nine units. Our program is designed for individuals new to the field as well as current GATE educators seeking professional development opportunities. As stated on the slide, to be eligible for this certificate, students must complete all nine units with a letter grade of a C or better, as well as a completed request for certificate. The courses in the program range anywhere from $350 to $500 per course, depending on the unit value. And I do want to point out that you can take individual courses without pursuing the entire certificate. Here's a list of the elective courses that make up our GATE certificate program. You can also visit this link later on after the presentation. And if you click on each of the course titles, when you access our course schedule, you can see a full course description to learn more about what is covered. Um, you'll notice that not all classes are offered every quarter, so you do want to plan accordingly. And you want to pay close attention to the unit value because this dictates the course fee and how long the course will last. So for example, you can expect a one unit course, um, like Learning Styles, to last three weeks online and cost $350. 
while differentiating instruction, which is the longest course in the program at three units, costs $500 and lasts for 10 weeks online. And the nice thing about our program is that you can pick and choose the topics that are of greatest interest to you as long as they total up to the nine units. At the bottom of the slide, you'll see some information about our free online gate community. Please follow the directions on this slide if you're interested in becoming a member and you will gain access to resources, news, and events regarding GATE. I have posted all of the recordings of our past GATE webinar, uh, webinars on that community page. So if you'd like to join, feel free to shoot me an email with your first name, last name, and email address and I can get you access to that. Oh, and shout out to Mia. I saw a chat message pop up from her, and she is a current student in our program. So thanks, Mia, for joining us today. Okay, here's a list of the courses that we're offering in the upcoming spring quarter. Differentiated instruction at three units, learning styles at one unit, and the arts and gate education at two units. Each course is listed here with its start and end date, as well as the online course fee. The schedule and enrollment information are also posted on our website. Enrollment is currently open and students can enroll either online or by calling our student services office at the number provided. And we do encourage students to enroll at least two weeks prior to the course start date. So our spring courses start as early as March 31st, so you can actually begin enrolling today. UC Irvine Extension also provides individual courses specialized in services and the entire GATE certificate program on-site or online to schools and districts at reduced prices. Currently, we work with school districts who are putting cohorts of teachers through our GATE program and are receiving 10, 15, or 20% off course fees just depending on the, uh, the size of the cohort. With some districts, we send our university-approved instructors to teach classes on-site at their district or school offices. Or we can also provide convenient online courses, which are nice with um, teacher schedules. It gives them a bit of flexibility. If you want to learn more about the program and our discount offers, please feel free to send me an email. Next week, California Next weekend, sorry, California Association for the Gifted is hosting its 52nd annual conference in Anaheim, California. UC Irvine Extension is proud to be a credit provider for this event. In order to receive one unit of quarter credit, not semester, individuals must attend the CAG conference and follow the directions on this slide. The deadline for all credit option submissions is March 23, 2014. This credit will appear on an official transcript, which can be used as proof of professional development or toward requirements for salary advancement. For those of you attending the conference, UCI will have a table so you can look for the enrollment form there, or you can also email me in advance. Now for those of you who attended the live first webinar of the series and are logged in today and then also plan on logging in for the remaining two, we are offering a credit option. In order to receive the one unit of quarter credit, um, individuals do need to attend all four live webinars totaling four hours and must stay logged in for the entire length of the webinar. We will not be giving credit for individuals who watch the recordings of the webinars, so it is important for you to attend the live events. The deadline for this credit option is March 27th, 2014. And if you just send me a quick email, my email address is listed on this slide, I can send you over the official enrollment form, which will have all of the instructions there as well. Okay, to wrap up my portion of the presentation, hopefully you saw some courses that piqued your interest and we hope that you will consider adding our fully online GATE program to your credentials. This slide has my contact information as well as my directors, so please feel free to contact us with any questions. Today's speaker is Hall Davidson, and I had the pleasure of sitting in at last year's CAD conference um, in his session, and I knew that I would want him as a presenter, so we're lucky to have him here today. 
Hall is a former bilingual math and language arts teacher and currently serves as Senior Director for Global Learning Initiatives for Discovery Education. So I'm going to go ahead and hand the presenter ball over to Hall so that he can further introduce himself and begin his presentation. Well, thanks, Lisa. Uh, it's great to be here. I, I won't be able to see your chat um, uh, all at once, but somebody will be watching, so please leave any questions if you want to do that. Uh, you have my Twitter address right there at the bottom. It is Hall Davidson, so join and follow and have a, a good time. Um, I have been working with the Gifted for a long time uh, all over the country. Uh, you see stuff there from uh, Maryland and Texas and some other places working with the Gifted and Talented. I was fortunate enough to uh, keynote the World Council for the Gifted when it was in New Orleans. That was 2005 when apparently all the records are in black and white because they couldn't find any record in color, but <laughs> it's fun to go back. And, of course, the CAG, the great CAG conference in, uh, in California, I've been uh, presenting at for a number of years, the first time I'm going to miss it in a long time. So this isn't to say that um, I'm an expert in gifted education uh, or, or gate education, but it is to say that um, I've been working with teachers of the gifted for a very long time. And in technology, teachers of the gifted always like to say, you know, we teach the gifted. Uh, don't expect us to know all this stuff, meaning the technology. And, of course, uh, that's true. So we're going to run through a lot of material. Uh, but let me say first, uh, this, is a, this is about gay students, and that technology does work. And if there's an area that probably needs to really move forward uh, quickly in technology, it is teachers of the gifted. It is gate. Um, these are just some things you see up there. Uh, it's a quick scan of strategy for uh, the gates. This is a, a summary of stuff from uh, the Davidson Gifted Education site and the uh, University of Delaware. And we're not going to talk about all of these. You see them right there. But... The idea is that you do want to do student-centered curriculum, which technology is so good at. Uh, you can maximize potential by expecting the best, and it's easier in technology because they recognize it themselves. You do end up with a student-centered curriculum. Uh, you do have student ownership when you use technology. All these things are wonderful for teachers of the gifted. And, you know, the, the old thing you never want to do, which is give people more work when they're done if they're gifted. Uh, the nice thing about technology is, once they get pulled in, they spend an awful lot of time doing it on their own in ways that if you structure it correctly in the class, we'll teach them about the curriculum, not about the technology, which they'll get pretty easily, uh, but about the curriculum, which is the part you use the technology for. So that's just a, sort of a, a brief talk about that. We're going to talk about three R's, and here's what they are. It's augmented reality, uh, virtual reality, and QR. And if you had with you your mobile device, you could just snap the screen right now and you'd get my handouts, which are right there. Or you could type it out and do all that stuff, but, which is up above. But that's a QR code that I generated, and that'll take you right to the handout page. So see if you had one, you could uh, do that right now. And if you're trying to reach it, oh, you just made it. So here's what the, uh, these new three R's are. Uh, quick response, we'll talk about augmented reality, and we'll talk about virtual reality. Let's go in and get ready for that now. In terms of, of augmented reality and what that really means are all of these things. Uh, it, it basically is taking what's real and enhancing it in a way that's important. So this is a football game, uh, and for uh, Rajendra, uh, who may not be following uh, football in Mumbai, uh, this is an American game. But what you see on the, uh, the left-hand side, let's see if I can actually draw this. Let's see. Look. Yeah, over here. Oh, look, here's in yellow. This uh, this isn't there, of course. That's the, uh, the screen. That's, that's a, a line that uh, added electronically. Neither is this line. But you couldn't imagine watching, could you, a football game or other sports event without knowing where the ball is and, and how far you have to go and what the score is and the downs. All these things add a, a serious element to the reality of watching that game. And you know a lot more, you appreciate a lot more, and that's sort of an example of what you can do with everything, whether you're looking at landforms or uh, formulas and mathematics. You can lay a layer on top of reality that then makes more sense. And the good thing about students is, of course, it's their reality, so they can do that too. So this is sort of a summation of what augmented reality really means. And where is it going? Is this uh, going to stop? Are we at the at the top of it. No, these are Google Glasses. I'm fortunate enough to have a pair of Google Glasses, and if we were doing this live, I could show you this. But here's an example. 
uh, Google Glass has an app, and if you go outside at night, you can actually paint the constellations over the sky. That means that as you look around, you're actually able to gain information uh, that hopefully can lead to knowledge about um, things that you can't see with your naked eye. So the ability to lay on top of reality, another layer on top, is sort of what we're talking about. Now, the, the, the great thing about this is, is you can do this now. Uh, there are teachers who are doing this uh, right now. This, these are my Google Glasses, and you can see the Google Glass display on my uh, phone there. And I'm actually translating uh, stuff into Spanish. Or is that French? Uh, anyway, it does that language, German, Portuguese, all that stuff. Biblioteca, I think that's Espanol. Anyway, the, uh, uh, you can look at something, and it translates in the glass for you. So anyway, that's, that's what's going. The ability to augment reality is a really important feature. People are doing this in the classroom right now. I was just at the Florida State Conference, a great educational technology conference. And as you see, uh, there's Tyler Hart and Karen uh, Ogan. Both of these are teachers, and they are um, using augmented reality and QR right now. Uh, so look, as a bonus, you get their handouts. By, by attending this session, this webinar, you actually get their handouts. We do? Yes, you do. What a bonus. It's a meta session. Anyway, that's, that's there and it's on. So there we go. And uh, here's, again, the direct links. And this is uh, also at Texas. They are also uh, presenting at the Texas uh, conference. So yes, reality really means improved. See that big R there? That's my clever way of tying the R's to reality. Anyway, for students, the chance to improve reality, because they can build these, and they're, they're building these right now. Just yesterday, somebody sent me pictures of their kids, and when I looked at them on my iPad, I can do it on an on Android device too, the kids' videos actually play. That's just from their pictures. So we'll talk about that. The first thing we're talking about, though, is QR codes. And if you'll send me something in the chat room, I'd love to know how adroit you are at QR codes. QR codes have been around for a while, and um, if you haven't used them, you really should. Uh, what happens is sometimes with the group, uh, you find an awful lot of people who know QRs, and they just want to get to the VR and the AR. Uh, so I'm going to cover this kind of quickly. But remember, this is being recorded. You can always go back, download the video, and look at this again. So if this seems like it's going fast, remember, it's being recorded, and I hope you go back and get more out of it. I hope there's enough content here that you get more out of it the second time. Anyway, QR is quick response, invented by the Nippon Denso automakers in Japan because they needed a way to get a lot of information on an auto part that you couldn't get. You can't write it out, but this triggers uh, a web page, a document, a picture, uh, whatever you want, and that's what's good about a QR code. That's what they are. You see them on on ketchup bottles, you see them everywhere. You, if you scan this ketchup bottle, you're taken to the Heinz ketchup site where they can then give you information and coupons and other good stuff like that. So these are out in the real world already, and they should be in a lot more classrooms. So here, again, if you are watching this with your uh, scan on your phone or your iPhone on your tablet, you'd be able to actually go to see the ketchup site. What we say in technology is hindsight. hindsight. See, that's it. That's a pun, Heinz. Anyway, so uh, here's how you make them. Uh, QR codes, uh, you're going to go to the web, and you're going to do a search for QR code generator. When you do that, notice there are about 7 million results uh, if you search for QR code generator. My favorite keeps changing. Uh, Taiwa used to be my favorite, and then they started charging for some services. And uh, the QR code generator is good. QR stuff is also good. But you go to that website, and what you're going to see is something like this. It's a place that you can paste a URL. In other words, something that you've copied from the web, from the address, but you paste in there, and guess what? You're, uh, you're able to see the QR codes. And look, in the, in the chat room, two other people have already saying they use it, uh, use QR codes to get the Padlet. It's really a good little trick. And when you paste in the QR code up there and you hit generate, this is the way it looks on Kiowa, you get a QR code. That means that any kid with a scanner, and a scanner can be a phone, a tablet, uh, anything, that they can then go and see that site. Uh, and that site, I say it's a site, but every picture on the Internet also has a URL. So you could send them directly to a picture of an eagle or directly to a, a PDF file. I mean, you can do a lot of stuff. Anyway, this is a QR codes that are, you can do it in color, and there are lots of other fun stuff you can do with QR codes. So that's how you generate it. Uh, once you've got it, once you know how to generate a QR code, what can you do? Well, hey, here's what they're doing in one school is they put book trailers in their books. What does that mean? Uh, some of you uh, 
who are younger may not recognize this. This is actually what went in the back of a book. Books were things they made from mashed up trees, and it was a center of curriculum for a long time. I mean, I'm kidding, of course, loved libraries. But hey, you open up the back of the book, and there's your, um, your uh, checkout card. But you've also got a place you can put a QR code. And if you do a search, you see over here for book trailers. Um, you know, I'm not sure it's highlighting there. Book trailers are things that uh, book publishers will put online, and they're like movie previews, but for books. So here's one I found, and again, you could trigger this if you had your little thing, but this is uh, called The Fifth Wave, and it's a great video about a young kid who flies a model plane. He crashes his model plane. Soon after that, a real plane crashes, and his sister runs out and saves him from that. But they have clearly some very interesting abilities, these kids. And does it make you want to read the book? Yes. So any student with a, a mobile device could look at that book pocket and see if they wanted to do it. So what's the next step? What do you think for, uh, for the gifted? Well, let them make their own, uh, their own book trailer, right? And of course, you don't have to be gifted to do this, but think about the implications. So this is one made by a student, and when the students make it, um, this is a, a book called The Pool of Gravity. Now, these are all videos. We're just not looking at the videos on this webinar. Videos can be a problem in WebEx, the technology we're using, because it really can be slow. So in person, uh, if you ever catch me in person doing this, you'll see these actual videos. Right now we're just switching pictures, but this is a great video. It's a kid video, which means I hated the music. You know, they used hard metal. But they tell the story. Nick's family's falling apart. His friend is dying from a terrible disease. A quirky girl has the answer, and you might learn things you don't want to know. That's the book called The Pull of Gravity. Does it make you want to read it? Well, I think so. And, of course, students can read it, and you say, you do a – a book trailer, and the best one is going to go in the back of the book, and we're going to print out a QR code. We're going to put it online on, let's say, YouTube, grab that URL, and print it out as a QR code. Here's another thing you can use them for. Uh, this is a, if you're from, well, gee, your agenda may not recognize this tree, but look, there's a little thing. If you don't know what kind of tree that is, it's not a problem because hanging in the tree is a QR code. I put it there, and it means that on your phone, you can actually get the definition of what you can see right there. Uh, it's an avocado tree, and you actually get a little Spanish lesson on the avocado tree, which is kind of fun. So, again, uh, this is from a video. I just took the stills out so we could see it. But that's a QR code in a tree. It's kind of fun, too. All right, so where is it going? Uh, gee, the gifted, how deep can they go? Well, look, we're eating our food. See the tag on the cow there? Uh, sh sooner or later, we're going to be tracking our food all the way from the field to the grocery store. There's no reason why we can't do that. Um, so that's how that works. Uh, you can see that uh, if I scan that with my phone, gosh, or my iPad or my uh, Nexus tablet, I'll be able to see maybe the farmer saying, hey, this is, this is you know, Minnie and you're eating her or whatever. Anyway, this is uh, or, or where the vegetables are raised and so forth. Uh, there's no reason why we can't link our food from right here. Is that our food, uh, our food supply right to our phones? Is that something that a gifted class might have a good time chewing on? I, I think so. This is another slide just I'm throwing in. QRVoice.net lets you uh, link to just audio. So I was on a panelist with these two people, uh, Kathy Schrock and John Fuglin. You may know those people. But, if you know, I didn't say anything. I just put it underneath them on the dais, you know, and people – saw it out there. So if you came up and scanned it, what you heard was, because it went to a qrvoice.net generated QR code, and what you heard was, so you are the famous Kathy Schrock. Anyway, that's what it said. If you scanned John Kuglin's name, it said, a communicable disease has been detected. Remove this person immediately, which was my joke on John. But it means that you can do things like that, print out QR codes, and gosh, do you think kids might have a good time with that? And the answer is yes was working with some special needs classes, and there are kids who are very sharp mentally but don't have the fine motor skills to type, so you can create QR codes that tell you things. So these, these are three cards that you could put together that would say, hey, Emma wants, likes, hates, whatever the QR code is. Remember, we're using QR voice for this, wants apples, wants so and so. Anyway, you move around the cards, you can build the whole sentence. Just one of the things you can do with QR codes you might not have thought of. So uh, these are the things, of course, that the gifted and talented are really good at, is finding ways that you might not have thought of using um, 
using technology, you know, as a QR voice. Um, how do you get it from their videos on their phones? And, and let me say also, there's a, and I'm not sure this is in the handout, but there are places that go where you can change the destination of the QR code. So you can laminate a QR code and have it light up a different place uh, every time. Every week you could change it if you wanted to laminate it. Anyway, that's a thought. How do you get it on the, from your videos? If you make a video um, on a cell phone, you can upload it to a, a YouTube account. Here's how you find that. Um, this is my YouTube account. And if you go there, you'll see that in your settings, you actually get a, a mobile upload address right here. If you create a YouTube account for your class and you hand out that address, it's really like an email or a messaging address, then anybody that makes a video on their phone and sends it to that address will go to the class website. Oh, what if they do, you know, things, inappropriate videos? Well, let them do it and then correct their behavior before, you know, before they get jobs that they'll lose if they do inappropriate behavior. Anyway, I think it's a very good thing to do. That's how you can uh, move from the mobile all the way to the, uh, to a QR code. And there it is. And the um, next one, these are the things I've done with my, uh, my mobile account. And you see people from all over the, all over the world really can share their videos and it takes just a few minutes, less than five minutes for those videos to go up. Once you have them, you can create a QR code. You also do with, with images with Flickr and there are people that have done contests for kids that sent in their images uh, via the Flickr uh, address. And again, once you're on Flickr or once you're on YouTube, you can get a URL and address and then you can create a QR code for it. So that's sort of the point there. You can also cut up a QR code, make it into a puzzle. Gee, how do I know which goes into which quadrant? Well, on the back, you might have put the states, right? So here's Nebraska next to Iowa. Where's Kansas? Where's Missouri? So they have to put them in the right place, tape it, and then flip it over, and then you see the video of you going, good job, or whatever. All right, so here, yes, here's deliver.com. That's a site that lets you actually change where a QR code can go. So you can print out one QR code and go to different places every week. That's what it could be. In other words, you scan it with your phone or a student scans it and you go to uh, one week, it's uh, about LinkedIn and the next it's about Washington. We have President's Day coming up. Anyway, how do you read a QR code? Again, on any device, you go there and you download, let me go back and let you read that. I'm sorry, I went quick. But you just download the app. The apps are for everything. Even a Blackberry, Mr. Davidson? Yes, even a Blackberry has an app that will read a QR code. So you download, you go to, the, go to your Play Store or the App Store and you'll find it, you can download it. Here's one I like, my favorite on my, my iPad. Ooh, it's $1.99 now? Huh, used to be free. Anyway, you download it and then it'll work and then it'll work on your phone. Lots of QR code readers um, and usually there's some free ones around too. All right, so that's QR code, that's QR. Remember, there's a lot of stuff involved in QR and uh, you just need to go back and explore. Um, each of these R's, the QR, the DR, and the AR, really could be a 90-minute session in themselves. So I'm gonna, my purpose here is to squeeze them all in so you get, hopefully, a taste of for it, and then you go to some of the links in the handouts, and then you go there. So web-based VR is this. Vir VR is virtual reality. It means that on a device, uh, whether it's a laptop or a phone, you can go, or a tablet, you can go to, for example, Rome. So again, we're not looking at the video, but in the upper uh, right here, this is somebody that's put ancient Rome. They've rebuilt it on a, on a computer. You can go there and look around the site. This is a second life down below uh, tsunami uh, experiment where you can actually walk into a tsunami. Your avatar can. When you log in, this is me in second life. You can actually walk into a tsunami, which is not a good thing to do in real life, but in a virtual reality, you can do that. Uh, here's a lot of virtual reality places you can go to. These are uh, tools. Some of these are just going there and looking around like all the art. Uh, or there is JPEG. That's not to me what VR is. VR is a place like this. Or the Smithsonian, you can go, and the Smithsonian has a virtual tour. This is VR. And a virtual tour means that when you when you see those little blue arrows on the ground over there, when you follow those with your mobile device, in other words, I'm looking at this site on my mobile or on my, let's say my iPad, 
I can click on those and then I go into the rooms. I can, yeah. So you actually, you can look up at the ceiling, you can look down at the floor. You're actually inside the room. That's to me virtual reality. And of course, there are people that are making these like Holodex now. So this is 2014. This is a big hit, the Consumer Electronics Show. But you have to wear this stupid thing, you know. I say stupid even though I've got Google glasses, so maybe I shouldn't shouldn't be so critical, but uh, when you look around, you become in a space. Maybe you're in a molecule. Maybe you're in the solar system, but that's where we're going. That's going to be ready for prime time probably in two years. Right now, you can do it right now. Uh, let's look at building a virtual reality in your classroom or maybe in a dangerous intersection you want people to look at. You can download an app. Sphere is one example. Pano is a 360 panorama. I love that one. It's 99 cents now. Totally worth it. And what it means is that when you've got that, it's kind of like a holodeck. Look at that picture on the left. This is a, um, a this is what it looks like when you use 360 pano. And in real life, this is a lot of fun. I mean, in real life, uh, in person, in real time. Basically, it gives you a grid, and you move around, and the camera paints reality into that grid. So you stand there and hold your camera and move it around, and you build, again, in minutes, a 360 panorama of your classroom that parents can see or of a dangerous intersection that you can go through with kids and things like that. Uh, it's important to do that. Even for parents, we had an accident out here in Los Angeles not long ago where somebody was um, did, had, uh, did not know the intersection very well, and, and it wasn't a good thing. So take a look at this. And, again, post anything in the chat room if you want to share if you're using this. You can send it to me, and I'll be able to see it, and maybe we'll pass it along. Anyway, the ability to create your own sort of holodeck is pretty much fun, and for 99 cents, it's a deal. Anyway, that's virtual reality. Uh, there's a bunch of other apps you can do. They tend to come and go. Tourist was my favorite online repository of this, but they may not be up anymore, but that's how it works. So take a look at VR. That's virtual reality, and that's the way that stuff works. Anyway, virtual reality, again, lets you inside a device, uh, lets a device put you inside another place, a real place. So when you turn left, you see what's on the left, and you look up, and you see what's up. Anyway, it's pretty neat. That's VR. And again, we could take probably uh, an hour just to talk about how, how uh, gifted students could use this. Here's somebody that just posted a thing and said, well, one of my students is a great fan of Darwin. You get to, Anyway, other things. You can you could actually, um, you know, go to Ecuador this way. Anyway, that leaves us time for the last half of, of this webinar on augmented reality. So we looked at QR, right, quick response codes. We looked at VR, virtual reality. Now we're going to look at augmented reality. Augmented reality of, of those three things probably has the most promise because the uh, tablets and mobile phones have improved so much. So it means augmented reality. It means the ability to actually lay reality and real data on top of the world. So here's one that's 99 cents. Uh, if you look up in the sky, you can see what airplanes are there. This is really true. They kind of float in the sky in front of you. Like there's a Ryanair that's going from here to here. It's going to Barcelona. There's one that's going to Portugal. It knows where it is because they're, you know, their flight plans are in the cloud. and You can figure it out. Anyway, that's how that stuff works. Gee, it sounds dangerous when I put it that way, but that's one way to do it. Here's another way that's kind of fun. This is a Pop R 3D Planets book. It's like a kid's book, but when you look at it with a – an app, the app that, that uh, Hopar has, uh, you see the solar system. What? Yeah, right there in the room. So see Mars, and again, we're looking at a still, not in a video, but Mars is above this kid's head. Not this kid, this is a teacher. We're doing a workshop. And I said, who wants to sit under Mars? So he came up, and he's contemplating it. See, so he's like thinking about the world. So there he is. At Mars, of course, in the meantime, is rotating, and it rotates in the right um, relationship to Earth's rotation and Saturn's rotation. And, and when you look at this app and look around the solar system, you realize, gosh, Jupiter has the fastest rotation of all. Anyway, that's an augmented reality. It lets you turn down the transparency, the universe, the sky background disappears, and suddenly the planets are in your room. Oh, really? Yeah, here's a Tyrannosaurus Rex that was in my living room, right? So that's a an app called AR Dino Park, and that's a video, that's a moving dinosaur that chomps and walks around inside my room. So that's a video that's actually playing. And the nice thing about this is, look, I, I can 
not just make it, oh, so cool, you know, look, a dinosaur, ho, oh, which is good for about 10 seconds, but there's the real size of a person. So if I'm going to make a shot, notice I can take a picture. These are pictures of dinosaurs in my living room and a picture of uh, the Mars over that teacher's head. I want to make sure the scale is right. This is the kind of thing you can expect from talented, gifted and talented students. I don't want you just to be standing petting a Tyrannosaurus Rex like you're bigger than it is, unless you're doing it for comic effect. I want you to really be able to scale out what this looks. I want a picture from you of a dinosaur on the school playground that shows the actual scale of a dinosaur. That's asking a little bit more, but it's what you can expect, I think, when you use this stuff with gifted students. You know, so that's one of the apps you can do. Um, this is one that's projected. They don't do this yet. But anyway, you look at a hotel and you see which rooms are for rent, right? That's, the, that's where it's going. That's not out there yet. Everything else I've showed you, uh, I've done in real workshops. So this can really happen. This is a really fun one. I'm just going to go through this quickly. But this is for the visually impaired. It's an app that adds on to reality by holding up, um, you hold up your phone or I think this is, is only Apple devices at the moment, an iPad or an iPhone, and it'll tell you what it is. So if I look at this, and again, I've done this all in real time. This isn't theoretical. If I hold that app over this, it's called Tap Tap C, S E E, Tap Tap C. It will say, it sends a picture up to the cloud. It comes back and says, couple on their wedding day. Not kidding. That's what it'll do. Uh, try it out. Tap Tap C. If I show this and hold it up, it takes a second, looks at the cloud, and it goes, Dallas cheerleaders. Not kidding. Obviously, it'll do $10 bills. Obviously, it'll know the president I was watching the State of the Union. Do I have the picture in here? Yeah, watching the State of the Union. The app knew Barack Obama. The app knew John uh, Biner. The app knew the vice president. And it knows in a supermarket that this is chunky grilled chicken and sausage gumbo. Anyway, what a magical thing that is. Uh, so, again, it's taking um, reality and lay adding a layer of information. Anyway, I love that app. So, the future really is here for this kind of stuff. Um, this is either kids, this is Japan, but they're looking at a printer, right? This is a printer. They are visually impaired. They'll never be able to see a giraffe. But if you go up and you speak giraffe to the printer, it prints it out. This is a little, little print head. Again, these are all videos, but I'm just showing you the stills. And there you'll get the printout of the animal and the child can actually feel it. See this kid over here looking at this giant bug? Now, the scale is slightly off. But anyway, the, the point of this is that this is here now. Uh, this is real. So when you work with the gifted, sometimes you think, hey, what will, the, what will the far end of this be? How far can they go? And the answer is you can go pretty far. Uh, there's an app now. Ooh, I don't think I included it. But it's called, let me give it to you uh, right now. It's called, one, two, three, B, catch. Like one, two, three, like the numbers, and then D, and that's catch. It's a free app by Autodesk. Uh, maybe I'll write it in the, uh, right here. Hang on, so I can do it over here. Yeah. One, two, three, D, catch by Autodesk. And it lets you actually build three dimensional Autodesk. It actually lets you build three dimensional uh, figures on the iPad. Now, it doesn't print them out, although supposedly you can do that. But it does let you create 3D models. It's, that's impossible to show on a webinar, but it's very cool. It doesn't take that long to do. I'm talking about 15 minutes, and you actually have a movable 3D model of your kids. But let's look at uh, one that a lot of teachers are using already. And uh, this is uh, great. This is called Erasma. And uh, the spelling is always problematical, but look, it's auras. Like, see auras? Like, if you're from the 60s and you've ever uh, cleaned your aura, if you'd put that in the uh, chat room, I'd love to see it. So we used to do all the time is, you know, you zone out and check out your aura. Anyway, the idea is aura is a thing that lives on top of something that's real, and you can make these. So aura, and it, let's say you do this now. If you download on your phone right now Erasma, and it's in, in the Google uh, Play Store. Play, what's it called? Play? Play Store, I think. And uh, it's also in the App Store. It's free. Uh, you could be looking at augmented realities before the end of this webinar. Now, this is Erasmus Studio. I'm going to come back to that. Let me show you what Erasmus does. And again, this is really fun to see in real, in real time. Uh, it's just not worth trying to show you a video uh, through a WebEx or really through any online webinar just because 
the video for Rajendra in uh, in uh, India would be so broken up by the time it got to him that he would we'd be in a different place. Not not just because it's India, but it could be next door. It just depends on your pipe. Anyway, but here's what it does: if you hold up that app to a twenty dollar bill, the bill changes. It does. What do you mean? Like uh, see the uh, see what's happening? The numbers start to move off the bill. Uh, you zoom in. He's not zooming in by holding the phone. The, the camera itself zooms in, and you actually get you zoom. It's very fun to see. Uh, you you zoom in. On the $20 bill, the, you don't move the phone. It's a video. So it's hard to say, but let me go back and show you the sequence again. There's a $20 bill. When I hold uh, an Android phone or a, an Apple phone over the 20 it changes before my eyes. So in other words, when I see it through the phone, the numbers change. Parts of the bill get highlighted. It zooms in on the top of the 20. Again, I'm not doing any of the phone stuff watching. It's a layer of reality on top of the 20. So it's very fun to see. If you, if you want to see it on YouTube, there's the link. There's a lot of Erasma uh, videos on YouTube. But it's most fun to do it yourself. So download Erasma, take a $20 bill, and then look at it through the app. It's very, very cool. What can you do with that? Well, uh, I'll, let me go back to here now. Uh, a teacher sent me pictures of his students. Uh, these are the typical things you see in a yearbook, right? Uh, at the end of the year, smiling pictures of these are middle school kids. When I look at it in Erasmus, a video of those kids appears on my phone. Hello, I'm Chad. These are my friends, and we're here to explore whatever they explore. So it's very neat. In other words, an image of a kid, when I hold up a phone to it, will talk and move and explain Yes. What could that trigger image be? Anything. Their picture, a Coke bottle, a, a, a picture from a textbook, all of those can trigger a deeper reality. And it means it can be those kids that when you uh, look at a piece of art, for example, art, art's used a lot for this. You know, they, the kid has done their art, you know, they've drawn their drawings, and they have it up on the wall. But when I walk by and I lift up my phone and fill the phone's camera with that piece of art, something happens to the art. And it could be that the art moves, or it could be that the artist comes up and goes, hi, here's what I was trying to do. This to me is the sun, which is light, and this is darkness. And darkness to me is what was represented in the Dickens novel, or whatever they're going to do. You know, they'll do great stuff. But all of that is able to, this free app is able to layer all of that on top of a piece of reality. Anyway, it's very good. So what's studio? Studio is where you go and create your own channel. In order to see those, in order to trigger the video from the pictures he sent me from their yearbook, uh, I had to subscribe to his studio. It's free, but it means that whenever he makes something in his classroom, I think he's in Connecticut, in Connecticut, let's say his kids make something on a on a on the Mona Lisa, right? When I look at the Mona Lisa, since I subscribe to his channels, I'll see his kids explaining it. What in California? You can see videos of kids from from Connecticut. Well, yeah, and that's sort of the magic that starts with QR codes. Remember, you can see things by looking at it with your camera, or your computer. Uh, that's what AR does, and it means that you can. Uh, do an incredibly rich layer on top of reality. So it may mean I'll know what a landform is, or it may mean that uh, somebody's explaining to me what um, what the design of the House of Representatives is, or whatever your kids want to do. But for the gifted and talented, this can go very, very deep. And they'll want to make it right. Like the, the ones the teacher sent me, i tell you his name, but I didn't ask if I could. Uh, the ones that he sent me, uh, the kids would be like a, a pole, like a lamppost, but in the video, they'd step out behind it as if by magic, you know, because that was the video that they did. They'll get clever. They'll want to make theirs different. And as long as you're tying this to the curriculum, they'll, I, my experience with working with gifted kids is they'll go in very hard and very deep and want to make it very good. They can get distracted by the magic of this stuff, so that's why you have to know how this stuff works so you can say, no, no, no. I don't want to just see something, um, but it has to tie something. So 
um, and as I just kind of mentioned, it says what a deeper reality means. It means that um, uh, a dollar bill is a dollar bill, and we can say who the president is and all the other stuff. But what is currency? What does it mean? Um, what 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 is our operating system here? You know, why is currency important? All of that adds uh, more onto the experience of currency than you'd get anyway. So maybe I shouldn't use the term deeper reality. <laughs> uh, augmented really means, you know, more, but it's sort of on top. So maybe I shouldn't go deeper. Anyway, but your kids, you never know the gift and talent, you know, it may go deeper with them. Anyway, that's Erasma. Erasma is just one of the really cool ways to do augmented reality. But it is free. If anybody's downloaded it already, uh, why don't you uh, – Put it in the chat room and just tell me what it looks like when you play. And, oh, is it just American currency? No. Uh, and it's also corporate logos and lots of other stuff. So explore. Anyway, Erasmus has a channel that everybody gets automatically. All right, so if you can have things like this happen, triggered, there's always a trigger image with AR, something that sets the new uh, layer in motion, trigger image. So if we can be triggered by a $20 bill or by a, a can of Coke or by the Mona Lisa. What about in books? Um, could an author build that in? And yes, my favorite example of this is a book called The Fantastic Flying Books of Morris Lessmore. Um, it's a great book. Um, and if you buy the book, I bought it on Amazon, I think it's $16 American, something like that. There's also an app that goes with it called the Magnotron. And you see it spelled out there because you can never find it in the App Store because of its weird spelling, capital N, period, capital O. Anyway, you see it there, so you're able to do it. Take a screenshot of it now and see what it is. Anyway, if you do a search for Morris Lessmore, you'll find everything, where to buy the book and the app. But here's how, here's how cool this is. And again, this is not theoretical. I do this all the time with groups, just as an example of how you can use augmented reality. So you take the book, and here's the book. And when you look at it through a, uh, a device, and I think, you know, this may be iPad-centric. It may be. But uh, it's not the only augmented reality book. I mean, the Costco catalog, it's familiar with that store, also has augmented reality. They, they trigger, an image will trigger and show you, like, reasons why you should buy that. You know, that, that candle. Anyway, the, the, here's the book. You see, it looks like a book. It's like a, book, a child's book, I mean, that, you, that you'd read to a child. Morris Lessmore loved words. He loved stories. He loved books. Anyway, the, what happens is all the books get blown away. They all, they all leave. They all kind of fly out the door. Uh, when you're looking at the book and you, you're reading the book, but you hold an iPad over it, and it may work with Google by now. I'm excuse me, with Android. I'm just not sure. But you can actually do things to the picture. So the picture suddenly gets, you know, pulled into the iPad, and you can move the books around or things like that, which is kind of neat. Down below here, you see Morris. This is where Morris, who loves books, has finally been taken. Uh, this is where Morris has finally been taken. Uh, it's where all the books have gone. See all the books around there? Morris loves books. And when Morris, when you hold the mobile device, in this case, the iPad, over the page in the book. When you lift up the iPad from the book, you are in the room. You do a 360, you know, you turn left and you turn right and you look up at the top and you look down at the floor. You're in the room. The student is in the room where Morris is. You hear the books reading themselves to Morris. You hear Dickens, right, trying, a Dickens book trying to read itself to Morris. As you move the iPad over the books, you hear their voices. Anyway, you are in the story. You are in the place where the character is. That, to me, is just staggeringly fun. So this has already been made, right? The, the, the uh, fantastic flying books of Morris Lessmore. Let me go back to the title. Uh, and this one thing, nice thing about a chat room is that people could post links and stuff like that. Maybe you'll get to see those later. But the uh, um, this is a book. This book is already made, right? The author, uh, who also won an Academy Award for the short based on the book, uh, or maybe the short that the book is based on, uh, that author has laid in this augmented reality layer on top. But could your students do that? Well, yes. 
with a RASMA, could they go in and build in a science book or in, a, in the heart of darkness? Could they create a trigger image that would show you where the character is in one of those novels? And the answer is yes, and think how much detail that requires. Well, I just read Heart of Darkness with my daughter, so I'm, I'm focused on Conrad. But, you know, but when, when they're going down the river, what does it look like? You know, Conrad is great about describing the jungle, but what would that look like in a, in a picture? Well, where is it? It's Central Africa. Where do I get a picture of that? How do I turn that picture into a, into a virtual reality? How do I? Well, they'll do it. And then suddenly, even the text of the book will trigger that. Anyway, that's, that's why this stuff is so good for the gifted and talents. Good for everybody, but this is the kind of, uh, of, of augmentation that can be very good. Anyway, that's, that's augmented reality. This, again, is a book that was already put together, and they built an app for it called the Magnetron. And that works. This you buy in the App Store. This you buy through Amazon or your local bookseller. And then you get a much different experience, an augmented experience when uh, you read the book. With Erasma, you can do that yourself. So here's some other cases that are kind of fun. I throw these in. I think these are maybe a little limited uh, for the gifted and talented, but it gives you ideas. It lets you think about things. So this is one called Color. Get it? Color with A-R at the end of color. <laughs> color. Um, when you get the, the templates, the coloring templates, and a student colors them in, Yes, you have to stay within the lines. Then when you hold up your uh, Android or Apple device to it, the picture comes to life. So there you see the airplane that the kid has colored in, um, and suddenly it's flying. You know, there's a cloud, and it's got little trails of white vapor and all that stuff. So that's called color. Anyway, um, it's, it's a limited. It's sort of a one-trick pony, but it might give your students some ideas. Hey, we could make a coloring uh, blank ourselves, the template, right? And then we could make the colored in image a trigger in Erasma. Could we do that? Well, yes, you can. So that's the kind of thinking. That's where something even as limited as this, Kolar, I mean, it's not limited. It's kind of fun. It's a great, great gift at the holidays for, uh, for kids of the appropriate age. But it means they could then create something else where somebody would have to draw something or make something or color in a grid, and then it would trigger the, uh, the Erasmus. Uh, this is another one called um, Zoo Burst. And again, it's hard to see, um, but I'm throwing this in. Uh, this is one thing we did at a Gift and Talent workshop. You actually build 3D pop-up books that are virtual. So when you hold up your, um, in this case it was a computer, pull up the, uh, the trigger image, you, you make the book, you know, pop-up book. It's hard to see, but it actually rotates. So the book will rotate around, and the you know 50th uh, uh, anniversary of, of CAG will pop up. So they're now past 50, but it pops up. You know, here's a little pop, and then my picture pops up, and then the state flag pops up, and you can turn the pages, and more things pop up. Anyway, it's kind of fun. Um, high school people don't seem as excited about this as elementary people, uh, but you can do it. Anyway, it's called Zoo Burst. Uh, zoo burst is another thing. Just again, just showing you some some stuff here. This is um, another great thing to show in person. You'll have to take my word for it. But it's an AR object. What? An AR object? Yeah, it's called Spiro, and it's a little object. You see the over here. I'm going to change the color. Let's make it red. What do you think? No, let's make it this color. Um, you see that ball? It's about the size of a soft, small softball. Uh, but when you look at it through the app. It becomes, in this case, a beaver. What? A beaver. Or it can become a zombie. And you control the ball with the, uh, the app so it moves forward and back, drives cats crazy, which is, you know, worth it in its own right. But when, they, when the ball moves around and the cat sees the ball, what you see is the beaver chasing the cat. Or it could be a zombie. There's a game called the Rolling Dead. Get it? The Rolling Dead. Uh, you see an, uh, an example of that here where the, the balls become, uh, when you looked at through the app, become zombies. Anyway, there are games and stuff like that. Uh, Spiro is round. Uh, earlier in the year, they said, hey, we're going to turn it into something like this. I guess it doesn't roll off tables as easily, <laughs> which has happened to me. Uh, but anyway, that's AR objects. So there's actually things 
themselves that can trigger emotions like that. Anyway, lots of other stuff too. Um, what else can I tell you about ARs? I'm actually going through this in a clip that I could have put in more slides. There are more slides in this handout, by the way, that I didn't think we'd get to, so I stuck them in the back. But there's, uh, there are trigger objects where when you hold it in front of a student, you see their skeleton, not their skeleton. You see a skeleton as if it appears before their own, uh, their own, as if it's on their own body. So you, it looks like it's their skeleton, but of course it's not. Now the thing about that is, and those are fun and you'll see them in the handout, that for the gifted and talented, we're very soon coming to this, this spot where that won't be a single template of a skeleton. You'll be able to read the data from a medical record. Whoa, what? You mean a doctor could hold up a phone and see uh, a sonogram of of my of something in my body? Well, yes. Right now you do it, and it's a medical record that's stored, and that's to bring it. You have to bring up the app, or you can print out the picture. But very soon we're going to be in a thing where we get real time data from this. Anyway, it's another way to think about where the gifted can go. Because gosh, there's a lot of really fun places that are going out there. Anyway. So I want to leave time, but please add the new three R's to your teaching. If you want to start on a, a fundamental level, get a QR code. Start making QR codes. They're a lot of fun. Make a virtual reality, a VR, or make an augmented reality, and that's the way that that works. So those are the three R's. I know we went very fast, but remember this is recorded. So you can go back, share the link with your friends. Um, you can get a hold of me. I, I think my email address is there. Yes, follow me on Twitter. But there are lots of teachers that are doing this now. This isn't just, uh, you know, um, the guy that goes around doing this. There, this is being done in classrooms, and it's really exciting. We're really at the at an age when kids are no longer just taking materials out of books. They're adding material to the books. Here's a QR code to a video I found for page seven in the geography book. Here's a video of me that's triggered by Mount Rushmore. That's sort of the way it goes. All right, so let's. Um, I'd love to see your comments. Uh, I think you have to send them to me, to Hall Davidson in the chat room. If there are any questions, I'd love to answer them. We've got a few minutes left. I think maybe for a couple. I forgot that I think uh, UCI also wants some slides at the end. Thank you, Mia Gallagher, for saying wow. It's always you know, satisfying. <laughs> yeah. Um, and if you, if you, you do have any questions, questions, yeah, feel free, everyone, to submit them in the chat panel. You can send them to Hall directly, or you can send them to all panelists, and we will be able to see them pop up in our chat panel. So let me – here we go. It's yeah, a if, limited if time you, offer because the offer expires in three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it is. So make sure you get your questions in now. If you think of a question later tonight, tomorrow, feel free to send them, email them to us for uh, so that we can address them. My email address is here. Let me go back to Hall's last slide. He's listed his Twitter handle and his email address too. So feel free. And Hall, I don't know if you want to kind of go th scroll up and down your chat panel. I know that you were busy presenting, so if anybody had chatted you a question that you might be able to address. Uh, there's uh, Michael Snyder said, just downloaded Erasmus. Fun, not sure how to use it in a classroom. Use it in the classroom um, by, of course, building your own Erasmus, creating a channel, let the parents get access to that channel, and they'll be able to see their kids work. Um, a picture that's published in the paper could be an Erasmus. So a parent could open the newspaper or whatever they're reading, and there could be their son or daughter going, here's what we discussed today and how this affects the civil rights movement. Or this is, we were comparing this to Martin Luther King's work, or whatever you want to do. Um, that's the way you can do it. Remember, these channels are in the cloud. So when your kid builds something in a classroom that adds a layer of information to something that's in the paper or a Coke logo, or something like that. The parents, if they subscribe to that channel, free, 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 will be able to see that, you know, certainly that night. Anyway, that's how it works. Um, if you have any other questions, um, let me know. I'm just looking at some of the ones that are in there now. And I hope you got something out of this. If you learned something, let me know in the chat room. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm here in this room. It's it's lonely. I mean, <laughs> Gosh, I mean, yeah, it's just terrible. I'm gonna give give Hall a smiley face or a, a virtual. Okay. <laughs> anyway, thanks very much for the chance. Uh, please go to the CAG conference. 
Uh, first time in years and years that I haven't, that I'm not going to be there, but there's an awful lot of good stuff there. And you do see uh, websites that are good and other ways to use technology. I think that um, a competitive university, USC, Lisa, is doing a technology strand at CAG. So uh, I hope so. Anyway, the, uh, that's what I was told. So go to the conference uh, in Anaheim. Uh, that's all. That's, that's it for me. Thank Perfect. you. Email me or text me if you have questions. Thank you so much, Hall. And, and we have a lot of people chatting in, their appreciation for the webinar, too, and sharing all the information. We got to chat. I can't wait to dive in. That's what we like to hear. Thank you for the inspiration. So thank you so much, Hall. And for all of you who are logged in, um, we do have another webinar next week at the same, same day and time. Um, it will be Discourse and Collaboration, Skills for the 21st Century with Marcy Griffith. So please do join us again next week. And like Hall mentioned, he does have, oh, let me see, about 20 or so additional slides that are at the end of his presentation that we weren't <laughs> able to get to today. But please feel free. Um, I'm going to post the email out, a link to the, this recording, and then also that way you can have the link, the direct link to his handouts, or you can scan the QR code as we, we learned today. So um, hopefully all of you will be able to check that out. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to send us an email. Thanks again, Hall, for sharing all of this information with us tonight. Um, I know that a lot of people, comments are still coming in that, that learned a great deal and can't wait to apply what they've learned with their students. So thank you again and have a great night, everybody. Good. I only wish I could see them. Thanks, Lisa. That was great. <laughs> Thanks.